this video is basically dedicated to complete set of commuting observables it is an important topic in quantum mechanics so let's get into the index the first we are going to learn about the definition of the CSCO then we are going to pretty much discuss about complementary theorem and the Hilbert space if you really know these two topics very well then you can jump up to the next topic which is we are going to discuss about this complete set of commuting observables and one example let's get started first the definition of the CSCO or complete set of commuting observables so in quantum mechanics a complete set of commuting observables CSCO is a set of commuting operators like x y z all position operators or px py pz all momentum operators whose eigenvalues completely specify the state of a system a set of observables a b c or many more is called a CSCO if one all observables commute in pairs if we specify the eigenvalues of all the operators in CSCO we identify a unique eigenvector in the Hilbert space of the system if there is a CSCO then it's easy to choose a basis to states uh, basis of states uh, made of common eigenvectors of the corresponding operators and the uh, eigenvectors can be uniquely identified by the set of eigenvalues it corresponds to okay so next we are going to learn about the compatibility theorem uh, if you really know this topic very well then please jump up to the discussion session okay so let's take two observables a and b represented by a cap and b cap then the compatibility theorem states that if a and b are compatible observables then one a cap and b cap have a common set of eigenbases to the operators are commuting so that this uh, this is basically equal to zero and this means uh, if you know the complementary theorem you really know that that a cap b cap uh, in third bracket means a b minus b a if they are compatible then a b is equal to b a as you know the general multiplication rule or if you the general multiplication rule in real numbers uh, if you multiply 2 into 4 or 4 into 2 these two are just the same but if you uh, divide 2 divide 4 you get 1 upon 2 and if you divide 4 by 2 then you get 2 so the normal division operation does not satisfy the this kind of operations okay so next okay now as the observables commute so that the measurement of one observable has no effect on the result of measuring another observable in the set um, as you seen that a b is equal to b a so if b first uh, measured in the state and then a measured or if we measured A and then measured B, the these two are just the same. These two, uh, the result will be pretty much same. Okay, uh, so it is therefore not necessary to specify the order in which the different observables are measured. Measurement of the complete set of observables con uh, constitutes a complete measurement in the sense that projects the quantum state of the system onto a unique and known vector in the basis defined by the state of operators or a uniquely specified vector in the Hilbert space okay so next we are going to learn about something about the Hilbert space okay so the name Hilbert space has given after David Hilbert who first studied the Euclidean space with more than three or rather with any infinite or finite uh, numbers of dimensions okay then we are going uh, so first let's take an example of the euclidean vector space which is really known to us okay so here uh, there is a uh, there is three coordinates z y and x and now and this is the origin 0 0 0 now if we uh, this is uh, let's take this is a vector now uh, if we really specify a point on these three uh, coordinate system on this the octant or the Cartesian coordinate system then we have to measure the distance between uh, distance from these three 
axis okay let's take the distance from the point uh, to the point from the x axis is a uh, then y and from the point uh, from the z axis let's take it's c uh, then the coordinate of this point will be abc here x y z are the orthogonal basis of cartesian coordinates system and the position of any point in the system can be specified by three numbers obtained from the distances from these three axes as here abc are the coordinates of the point shown with the blue arrow okay just like x y z axis anyone can choose different orthogonal basis now or what is our orthogonal basis our orthogonal basis are basically those uh, basis are these three axes uh, z y and x and uh, it, they are called orthogonal because these three axes are in perpendicular are in perpendicular to each other that's why they are called the orthogonal basis okay next let's now take three different basis u v w in the euclidean vector space and as previous the position of a point can be defined by these three basis also to though they are not orthogonal to each other let's take these three basis and as you can see these are not orthogonal to each other so this is the origin and let's take a point uh, a position vector with uh, the blue arrows uh, signifies the position from the or the distance from the origin of the point and let's take the distance uh, from the u axis is perpendicular distance is okay uh, these three u axis is a prime from the perpendicular distance from the v axis is v prime and from the w axis is c prime here the position of the same point are defined by three different numbers the perpendicular distances from the new three bases a prime b prime and c prime so the coordinates are depends on the choice of basis okay so first where uh, the we choose the three vectors uh, three axes as x y z the coordinates are different a b c and now the same point can be defined by uh, another different three numbers which basically depends on the choice of basis okay now in this problem uh, in this uh, here the bases are u v and w okay so the coordinates are depends on the choice of basis in statistical mechanics the phase space six dimensional space with three position vectors x y z and three momentum coordinates p x p y c p z also an example of hilbert space for infinite dimensions there will be infinite numbers of bases okay now definition of hilbert space h hilbert space is a real or complex inner product space that is complete with respect to the norm defined by the inner product okay now the properties are elements members f g or h of h the hilbert space are subject of two operations addition and the multiplication is a scalar k k1 here a scalar k k1 or k2 okay these operations produce quantities that are also members of the same hilbert space okay addition is a commutative and associative as you all know fs plus gs is equal to gs plus fs this is commutative and fs plus gs plus hs and fs plus gs plus gs plus hs and this is in uh, in the third bracket this is called the associative law the multiplication by a scalar is commutative associative and distributive okay so this is the commutative law this is the distributive law okay this is the associative law and distributive law okay next again uh, h the hilbert space spanned by a set of basis functions phi i where the basis functions the range can either be finite or denumerable and infinite like the positive integers this means that every function in h can be represented by the linear form fs uh, the summation over a n phi n so, uh, okay this property is also known as the completeness of the hilbert space 
the basis function should be linearly independent so that each function in the space will be a unique linear combination of the basis functions okay for all functions f s and g s in h there exists a scalar product denoted as this is called the inner product okay which evolutes the finite real or complex num numerical values so that does not contains s okay and which has the properties first property is the inner product of the same member let's say is obviously greater than zero okay now this signifies basically the magnitude of the vector okay with the equality holding if it is identical if f is identically zero okay that quantity uh, the no, half of the norm or the inner product is called the norm of f and is written as this like this into modulus okay so the second property is let the g uh, let's take the inner product of gf and let's the let's take the complex conjugate okay this this star over here signifies the complex conjugate of the inner product of g and f is equal to the inner product of f and g okay uh, and here another uh, the com the inner product of f and g plus h is equal to the inner product of f g and plus f h and f k g is equal to k f g okay consequences of those of these properties are that f k 1 g plus k 2 h k 1 f g plus k 2 f h but k f g basically equal to k star inner product of f g and k 1 f plus k 2 g h inner product basically equal to k 1 star f h plus k 2 star g h okay this is a short note on hilbert space if you want to know further about this particular topic then i have made a separate individual video on hilbert space with more detailed analysis you can get the link of the video from the description box or from the i tab above okay so next we are going to discussing about the compatibility theorem Okay, any quantum state can be defined or represented by a set of bases formed by some orthogonal gates or bases or brass. Okay, just like any point on the vector space can be specified by three numbers or the perpendicular distances from the three bases x, y, z. So here a Hilbert space will be considered with suitable basis vectors, and a quantum state will be represented in terms of the bases. Okay. Let's take two observables A and B. Suppose there exists a complete set of gates. Okay. This symbol, the gate psi n in between uh, two second brackets, signifies a complete set of eigenstates. Okay. whose every element is simultaneously an eigen gate of a and b this means a and b are compatible if the eigen values of a and b corresponding to gate psi n represent respectively by a n and b n so that a operator uh, or the measurement applying on psi n we get a n psi n a n as the eigen value and b uh, operating on psi n we get b n psi n whereas b n is the eigen value now if the measurement for both observables a and b has done on an eigen state psi n we get eigen values a n and b n as answer okay now we're going to discussing about the csco okay let's take an operator a cap uh, of an observable a which has all eigen values non degenerate so the eigen states are all uniquely defined by significant eigen values if the eigen values of an eigen state the gate an of the operator a cap is an then it can be specified uniquely in a hilbert space so that the observable, observable a is itself a self sufficient csco however if some of the eigen values of an are degenerate just like having degenerate energy eigen values 
okay uh, then those states cannot be uniquely defined if a n ket a n and ket b n share same eigen value a n then these two states cannot be defined uniquely in the hilbert space spanned by the eigen kets of a okay to visualize visualize this let's take the at atomic quantum number as an example okay let's take this is a atom where uh, the red circle signifies the nucleus and this blue yellow and green signifies three uh, electrons and here uh, these are basically the distances of the orbits from the center of the nucleus of these three electrons okay here the green yellow and blue circles signifies three electrons in two different distances nucleus uh, from nucleus r2 and r1 respectively so that the main quantum number n for blue circle is n equal to 1 as it's in a uh, in the second orbit and for green and yellow circle will be same n is equal to 0 as these two are in the same orbit so by knowing only the main quantum number you cannot specify one particular electron in n equal to 0 orbit as i have uh, colored it uh, these two electrons with two different colors so i can specify it but the electrons are identical particles you cannot identify a particular electron uh, or just giving it a name or something identical things because those um, any two electrons are just same okay so we cannot identify a particular electron significantly okay to short out this problem this is assign a new quantum number called azimuthal quantum number denoted by l which signifies different subcells depending on the probability density of electron thus it is capable of different differentiate between two electrons okay now for n equal to 1 l can take two different values for n equal to 0 l has only one value l equal to 0 so again we cannot differentiate between green and yellow ball then physicists introduce magnetic quantum number and so on at last by assign the spin quantum number okay this the spin quantum number one can uniquely define an electron so that to uh, uniquely define one electron we need four quantum numbers n l m s now here is a note that spin quantum number or s does not signifies that the uh, rotation of electrons uh, all of uh, many of the students have a problem that they thought that electrons are literally rotating about its own axis while uh, rotating or revolving around the nucleus so now that's not the case uh, it's basically a totally quantum mechanical thing it is assigned just to differentiate between two electrons there is no particular or any kind of rotation uh, in the electrons okay it's a totally quantum mechanical thing now as the eigenstate of a the a n ket a n and ket b n has the same eigenvalue so to uniquely define these two states separately a second observable b is introduced which is compatible with a from the compatibility theorem it is known that a common basis eigen functions of a cap and b cap can be found now if each pair of the eigenvalues a n b a n and b n uniquely specifies a state of this basis thus a csu has formed uh, the set the a and b in a second bracket the di the degeneracy is in a is now completely removed as you have two different values for the measurement upon th those two eigenstates huh, by the operator b okay now if there exists at least one pair a and b in which does not identify an eigenvector uniquely in that case the previous procedure will be applied again by adding another observable c which is compatible with both a and b in the basis if the basis of common eigen functions of a cap b cap and c cap is unique that is then a new csu will be formed uh, that will be uh, represented by abc in a second bracket okay 
and like this more compatible uh, compatible observables will be added until the state will be uniquely defined in a hilbert space now now if there are uh, finite csco let's take a b c or more for a state say the ket psi then by expanding the state in the hilbert space we get psi uh, the summation i j k and so on c i j k is a constant and so on uh, with these three uh, these okay the kets a i b j c k and so on where a i b j c k and so on are the eigen kits of the operators a b c and form a basis space okay if a b c measured si simultaneously on the above state then we get the probability given by c i j k square now here these a b c are have to be the compatible with each other means uh, there is no restrictions that uh, on the order of measuring a b or c you can apply uh, a b or c uh, in the whatever the order is okay so now we are going to talk about one example the hydrogen atom to uniquely specify a state of hydrogen atom the set of csco is h l square and lz where h is the hamiltonian operator of the hydrogen atom problem l square is the angular momentum operator and lz is the z component of the angular momentum operator now the question is why physicist had chosen these three operators okay to understand this let's first choose what happen if they choose lx ly lz as the set of csco and the silva simultaneous eigen state of these three operators we find out let's take okay from the commutation relation we get li lj is equal to i h card this is called the levi sabita symbol lk now another assumption we going to make here are basically the eigen values okay if you really don't know what is a levi sabita symbol is then uh, comment me in the below then i will make a separate video on this particular topic okay let's take lx phi not equal to lambda x phi not lambda lambda x is the eigen value of the lx operator ly phi not is the lambda i phi not and lz phi not is the equal to lambda z phi not okay now lx ly acting on phi not we get i h card lz phi not now with the from the compatibility theorem we know that lx ly is uh, in the third bracket we get lx ly phi not minus ly lx phi not equal to i h cut lz phi not now the ly acting on phi not we get lambda y phi not and ly lx acting on phi not we get lambda x phi not is equal to i h cut lambda z phi not as lz acting on phi not we get the eigen value lambda z okay so lambda x lambda y phi not minus lambda y again lx now lambda y is a constant as it is eigen value so i can uh, take it out from it and then apply lx on the phi not and we get the uh, eigen value for the lx operator and we have chosen this as L L lambda x so we get lambda x lambda y phi not and the same case here lambda y lambda x phi not i h k equal to i h k lambda z phi not so this is basically equal to zero why that lambda x lambda y lambda z are only numbers so they commute means lambda x lambda y, if, if if you multiply one into two equal uh, then it is basically equal to two into one okay so that's why we get lambda z equal to zero now similarly we get lambda x equal to lambda y equal to lambda z equal to zero which is not possible so we can take only one operator to be non trivial and others will be under undetermined or rather say impossible to be determined or we can choose another operator that can be compatible with these angular momentum operators okay as these angular momentum operators signify rotation so the operator that compatible with these operators should be invariant under rotations now as we all know that the magnitude or the length of a vector is invariant under rotation so let's take here again three uh, coordinates and a vector and let's rotate it uh, for 90 degree as you can see the length or the magnitude of the vector is invariant under rotation so let's take l square as the compatible operator which is rotationally invariant and l square means lx lx plus ly ly plus lz lz now l square lx then we get l square lx minus lx l square and if we then 
just put the expression for the L square we get like this and okay so as Lx is basically uh, commutes with itself Lx so this gives us 0 and then uh, Ly with Lx with Ly here and as on we get these three okay now L square Lx is basically equal to the Ly Lx if we uh, if this gives the third bracket on Ly, Ly Lx we give it gives us minus i h cut L z and this gives us minus i h cut L z this gives us i h cut L y and i h cut L y so we get L square Lx is basically equal to 0 and similarly we get L square L y is equal to 0 and L square L z equal to 0 so L square commutes with all the component of the angular momentum operator the Hamiltonian of the hydrogen atom problem is h cap this is basically equal to minus h cut square over twice m del square minus z square by r which is the coulombic potential term and as the Hamiltonian is a function of r only and has rotational invariance where m is the reduced mass of the system since the components of l are generators of rotations it can be shown that shown that lh is equal to 0 and l square h is equal to 0. Therefore, a commuting set consists of L square one component of L which is taken to be Lz and H so that H L square L forms a CHCO. Let ENLM the ket be any basic uh, basis state in the Hilbert space of the hydrogen atom then H applies on this we gives us En as the eigenvalue and L square applied on this we get L into L plus 1 plus h cut into h cut square as the eigenvalue and applying lz on this we get m h cut e n l m that is the set of eigenvalues e n l m or n l m whatever you can you want it to say completely specifies a unique eigenstate of the hydrogen atom okay subscribe this channel hit the bell icon Thank you for watching.